let's take a look at a sample extractive workup after running an organic reaction. And this here is a reaction that I've uh, run today. And part of the workup procedure was to quench the reaction with water. And uh, there's some, some base in here. And my product is also in here. So what I want to do in, throughout the course of the extractive workup is to isolate my product and to purify it by removing all the unwanted uh, components of the reaction, maybe some unreacted starting material or the reagents we've used, etc. Okay, so I'm going to use a sub funnel for that. The first instruction in my procedure says to extract the product twice with ether. And so that means I'm going to introduce my uh, reaction to the sub funnel, my reaction mixture. Okay, and I'm, and I'm going to use ether to uh, dissolve all of the product and get the product out of the organic mixture. And so um, I have a, a portion of ether measured out here. Let's pour that right into the reaction flask as a way of getting out any product that may have been left behind here and pouring that in. And then as usual, I'm going to get two layers, aqueous layer on the bottom and the organic layer on top. And now uh, to do this is my first extraction with ether. And uh, of course, I need to mix these two layers to make sure the product gets transferred to the ether layer. But I also have to vent it. You can maybe hear that little swoosh of gas. It's a little tight. I'll loosen that up a bit um, to make sure I vent any ether fumes that are building up. So I want to give it a good mix to transfer all the product into the ether layer. Okay, And actually it looks quite different than when we started. This was pretty cloudy down below and that's because the aqueous layer had a lot of organic product dissolved in it. So that would make it cloudy. And so uh, that's my first extraction. So what I need to do now is separate these layers. I'm going to draw off the aqueous layer. There's a little film in between the two layers, some probably some undissolved uh, things in there, maybe some dust. Okay, and now I need to remove this ether layer, which has my product in it. Okay, again, I'm going to make sure I label my um, flasks. I'm going to call this the organic layer, and I'll call this the aqueous layer to make sure I don't mix them up. Okay, and I'll just pour this organic layer out from the top. And this is the first extraction that I've done of my product. I'm calling it extraction because I'm removing the product from the reaction mixture. Okay, but it said to extract twice. So what I'm going to do is going to take this reaction mixture, this aqueous layer, and I'm going to pour it back into the SEP funnel so I can do a second extraction. Okay, and this is why it's important to keep our flasks labeled and know which is what because we are going to be transferring things back and forth like this. Okay, and now I need to measure out a second portion of ether. And I'm going to do my second extraction. My fingers are making sure that the cap is secure and not going to fall off the stopper. And I'm venting away from my face and away from others and giving it a real good mix, making sure our product has a chance to move partition between the aqueous and the organic. And the bulk of it is going to be moving to the organic layer because, um, <clears throat> because it's an organic product. Okay, and so it's not uncommon to extract two, maybe three times to ensure the transfer uh, is complete. And I have my uh, aqueous flask down here. And I'm going to draw this off now. And now I'm done with this aqueous layer because it has, get some of that insoluble material down. I'm done with this aqueous layer because I've gotten all the product out that I want. Okay, and the next instruction is to wash 
the combined organic layers, or the combined ether extracts, sometimes they're called, wash it with water. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add back in that first ether extract. And here I want to do this with a little rinsing because I want to make sure that I transfer it completely. And it says to wash it with water. So I have a portion of water here. And again, we might have some washing uh, with sodium bicarbonate or dilute acid or um, a variety of things to make sure we we remove any undesirable components of our mixture. So I'm going to tip it over and vent. And shake gently at first. There is a big release of gas there. Still doing that, so I'm not going to shake too long without venting. So I sure don't want an accident. Okay, and so now I'm washing with water, so if there's any other components of our reaction mixture that were in that uh, ether layer that we don't want, some salts or any of this original reaction mixture that got taken off with the, with the ether layer, we're going to be losing that now, and we're cleaning up our ether layer a little bit. Okay, looks like we have two good layers. And so after washing now this aqueous layer, I uh, don't need any longer. I can combine it with the original aqueous layer since all the aqueous is going to go together. If you want to put it in its own Erlmeyer flask, just to be safe, uh, you know, that's okay too until you're a little more comfortable with the extraction process. But I'm, I know that this uh, aqueous layer is waste along with the original aqueous layer, so I'm going to combine those two right now. Okay, and that was it for my workup for, for my extraction process, but as you can see, or hopefully you can see uh, on the screen, my organic layer is very cloudy. And that's because after seeing so much, uh, so much water, it has a lot of water dissolved. Now, we know that drying is typically the last step in an extractive workup, but rather than going straight to a, a dry drying agent like calcium chloride, a lot of times we do a preliminary drying step uh, of washing with brine. So let me measure out a portion of brine. And brine is simply saturated sodium chloride solution. So this is another water solution, but it's a salt solution. And uh, when I wash with that, it's going to do a good job of removing most of the dissolved water from the ether layer. So this is an excellent preliminary step it's quick and easy. It, it really cuts down on the amount of uh, calcium chloride you need to use. And again, some mixing and venting. And now I'm giving a chance for all the dissolved water in the organic layer to move to the brine layer instead. And again, hopefully you can see that on the, on the uh, video that the top layer is now clear as water, really very clear, so it, it obviously did a good job of removing some of the um, dissolved water, the majority of the dissolved water, really. So now we'll remove that brine layer, and our organic layer is finally, has our product in there, it's, uh, it's pretty dry. We're ready to dry it further though. We need our last drying step is the calcium chloride. And so uh, let me get a clean flask. Excuse me. So that uh, this is actually the cleanest flask that I have. Sorry. <laughs> I wouldn't pour it back in the original one. I'll put it, I'll, I would put this in a clean flask. And I'm going to rinse this a little bit to make sure I have complete transfer of my product. So rinse it with a little clean ether. Okay, and now we're ready for our drying phase. Let's get a little calcium chloride or magnesium sulfate or sodium sulfate, some, some such uh, drying agent. We're going to add a small portion to it. And because we already did that brine wash, it's probably going to need very little calcium chloride. Okay, but still the first layer I put in here uh, is clumping up. 
So I'll add an additional portion and I'll continue to do so until the last portion of calcium chloride I added in uh, no longer clumps up with the rest of it. Okay, and uh, when it's thoroughly dried, it's nice to let this sit for five minutes to make sure the calcium chloride has a real good chance of, um, of drying it. In fact, because this, this flask had a little of the residual uh, solution in there, it's using more calcium chloride than it normally would. Okay, and then finally, I'm going to uh, want to strip off the organic solvent to leave my isolated product behind. And so uh, a lot of times we do that, uh, we could might maybe do that just by uh, evaporating it off or we could use something like a rotovap to evaporate it under reduced pressure and do it a lot more quickly. Okay, and so I'll just use some fluted filter paper to filter off our drying agent. Uh, my round bottom flask has already been teared. I know how much it weighs so that after I put it on the rotovap, I'll know exactly just how much product I have. That's, uh, I can weigh the round bottom directly with the product inside. And a few rinses should be good at transferring all of our product solution into the round bottom flask. And now our workup is done and we're ready to put this on the rotovap and have our isolated product.